guys, today we're going to be chatting through my simple five-step GoPro cinematic workflow using the free version of the CapCut desktop app for Mac. You can get it for Windows, but I'm using the Mac version hence the computer in the background. So hopefully after watching this video, you'll have an honest understanding of how much fun video editing can be and how you can actually make your GoPro travel videos look good. Now, you might be super new to the world of editing and you're looking to make something awesome with all the footage that you've just captured on your latest adventure. If you're about to head off on a trip um, with your GoPro, then I highly recommend that you also check out this video up here in the cards because that is gonna set your camera up for success so you can get the best content, come back to this video and start your editing process, but let's get stuck into the editing. Now, running through my workflow, now keep in mind that this process begins once you've already taken all of the content off your SD card and you've saved them. I recommend using an external hard drive to store all of the clips um, and just to allow space on your computer's hard drive to operate efficiently. Now, I also recommend toggling on proxies in the CapCut um, desktop app. This is so that your editing suite will work more efficiently by creating low res files of your high res files of these high res GoPro clips and in doing so, it's it's going to speed up the editing suite's workflow. So we should have already downloaded CapCut, but if not, it's the top link of the description. My five step cinematic workflow is as follows. One, dump and select. Two, bookend with music. Three, flow, arrange, transition. Four, sound effects, color grade. And five, export and upload. Now there's a lot in each of these and I'm going to unpack them. So. Let's breathe. <laughs> but anyway, when it comes to setting up your CapCut workspace, there is nothing worse than trying to edit cinematic content with a slow computer because basically you're going to lose interest in the process and end up giving up. And that's not what we want. I want to make sure that you finish this video edit regardless. You can even ignore steps two, steps three and four in this process, but please do yourself a favor and finish what I know you have already started. We are here and we're all about progress, not perfectionism. Another suggestion that may help in, in this process is just being a little bit more critical with your decision making. And what I mean by this is if the clips don't immediately impress you, the lighting is off, this camera was super shaky or it's too dark, then don't even bother trying to polish it. Just find your best clips. You know, this might mean selecting just six or seven out of the hundred or so clips you've captured, but making sure those six or seven are absolute bangers because at the end of the day, this is a cinematic video. It's not a vlog. So cinematography is important. Be critical with your selection and you can enjoy the other parts of this process. All right, number one. When it comes to this part of the process, you can either import every single clip you've captured on your trip, and to be fair, this is exactly how I used to do it, or you can go through a pre-vetting process in the folder, wherever you've stored them, and make a pre-selection. I think this is the best way to go because it's gonna save you a whole heap of brain power and allow you to focus that energy on being creative with CapCut, rather than spending your time filtering through all of your garbage clips in your editing suite. So just pre-vet them, take the best ones, put them into your editing suite, then we can get really creative and enjoy the editing process. Then once you've found your nuggets of gold, you know, your favorite moments, the clips that really speak to you, in my opinion, these are the ones that have really pretty lighting. Um, it's where the camera movement is relatively steady, where I can find contrast between the environments, um, where I have a selection of different filming techniques and camera angles, you know, time-lapse, night-lapse, selfie, vehicle mounting, point of view, hopefully you get the point, you know, I want flavor. Again, I think GoPro edits are really a collection of these dynamic flavors and the most cinematic GoPro videos seem to harness the camera's potential through the use of these different styles of shots. If you want to do some extra homework, then I highly recommend spending a few hours watching GoPro Million Dollar Challenge edits and just break down some of those shots. There's a link up here in the cards to a previous video where I've started doing that exact process. But my point here is that perspective when it comes to GoPro filmmaking and cinematography really is everything. So harness it in your edit. Anyway, now it's time to bookend all of these shots that you've selected with music. Now this technique is simple. Find a song that speaks to you. This may be something you've been you know, re recently listening to. This may be a song that kept popping up whilst you were traveling, or you may be publishing your video to YouTube and you wanna keep things clear of copyright infringement. So you might find something on a royalty free or a licensed music library like Music Bed or Epidemic Sound or even Track Club. Now, links to those libraries are in the description below, but the goal here 
in this technique is to utilize the favorite part of the track, your favorite part. And in this example, I found a song from Musicbed and I'm using the final 12 seconds of that song. Why? Because in my opinion, this part of the track really spoke to the style of edit that I wanted to create. So it's important as an editor to scrub through the song and use your intuition here, make emotive decisions and then allow that section of the song to structure your video. Do not use the song from start to finish just find a part of the song that speaks to you. This is the goal. This is how you structure a cinematic edit. This is what gives you the timeline, the time frame to then squeeze all of your best shots into bookending with music. Very, very simple technique, one that I highly recommend that you test out. When it comes to flow, there are three critical techniques that will drastically improve your cinematic video editing. And they are mirroring, <laughs> so simple, but so important speed or tempo changes, and keyframing. So mirroring is quite simply going through your selects and seeing if they flow better the opposite way. It's just one click of a button in CapCut. Now in my example, both of these two underwater clips I think work better mirrored. They work better the other way. So be careful when mirroring clips that contain signs or logos as these will show backwards but my point of view here is finding natural rhythms in the clips to maintain flow. Now, as Westerners, we read things from left to right, so oftentimes I believe it's more harmonious for clips to also flow from left to right, but if you wanna break this rule, go for it, but play around with the mirroring tool to just see how the clip can flow without any, adding any you know, crazy whiz-bang epic effect. Speed or tempo changes are a great way to allow your clips to breathe or rest on a moment. Now, I like to do this by simply cutting on the clip on the bar or beat and then changing the, the, the speed or tempo. Now this is really important to understand that this is only going to work if you've captured your clips in 50 frames per second or higher. So again, if you're new to video editing, you're new to GoPro filmmaking, watch that other video up there to better understand frame rates. 24 or 30 frames a second will jump frames when you're slowing them down. So you need at least 50 or 60 frames here to make this work effectively. Now the last little technique that I like to use is called keyframing. Now this is a great way to add flow to say a static shot or a locked off shot a time lapse for example i've done this by punching in or ken burns cropping on the on the lighthouse time lapse clip now to do so you just simply add a keyframe at the start of the clip and then move your timeline um, to the end of the clip and increase or decrease the scale that's going to make that clip move in or out depending now again you could scale up the clip and bring it down to 100 percent or you can start at 100 percent and scale up to 120 or 130. just play around with this see what looks harmonious again if it's irrational if it's a bit too like dramatic if it's a bit too dramatic then it might not work but again you've got to use your intuition here really watch the clip back click play and, and feel it out. Next up is color and sound effects. Now adding color can be super difficult, but it can also be really easy in CapCut, especially if you're using lookup tables or LUTs. Now, the ones I've been color grading with, you can pick up from our website, so you can start there, link in the description. But once you've downloaded some epic LUTs, you can import them into CapCut. Um, just head to the adjustment tab, then LUT, and at the top you'll see a plus symbol with a, an icon which says import. Simply select all your LUTs, and they'll be stored in your CapCut for any future projects. Now, when it comes to color grading your clips, you can create an adjustment layer for each of your lighting environments. Now, I recommend doing this for each of the different lighting environments rather than the entire clip because you don't want one color to suit all of these different environments. Once you've added these adjustment layers on all of your different environments, then you can simply highlight that adjustment layer. Start by sampling some of your LUTs, so just scroll over them and see which looks good. Um, and you can just get a preview of the color. And once you've, you know, you gel with something, start there. Now, if you don't have any LUTs, you can simply just start adjusting the colors through the HSL curves, the hue, saturation, and luminance. But I like to start with LUTs and then modify when it comes to color grading because it just speeds up the process and it also makes it a lot easier. You may also like to create a reference color palette from a film or photo that you've seen. This is another great way to color grade. You can simply screenshot or import an image, you know, one that you want to replicate and place it next to your clip. And then you can start to tweak the colors to reach the same tones as in your reference image. Now keep in mind that this part of the editing process can take days depending on your own level of perfectionism. Again, don't get too caught up here. 
better. Over time, you will improve this flow and you know you will get the colors um, that you are wanting in your videos. But again, I said at the start, you might not even wanna do this part of the process. Um, it is a real, you know, this is part of cinematography. This is part of you finding your own style and finding your own tone within your video edit. When it comes to sound effects, again, this is a super fun part of the process. Now, I highly recommend using the CapCut's already inbuilt sound effects library. Simply navigate your way up into the audio icon and use the search bar to find relevant sounds. Now, the goal here is to go through your clip and just make sure that these sounds are harmonious with the actual visual. Um, you might also like to right click on your clip and separate the audio and then use that audio to also add some textures and vibe to your specific edit. Now it's really important to do this with a set of headphones on so that you can understand where each of these sounds will sit within the spectrum of sound. Some of the sounds might be a little bit extraneous and popping out. Just bring those levels down. This is, again is a timely process. Give yourself you know, a, a day, a fresh day of fresh ears and then come back to the edit and have another listen to it to see if all of the sounds that you've used within your edit you know, sit nicely within the spectrum of sound. What you also might like to do is create keyframes on your audio bed, the track that you've selected within your cinematic edit and add some ducking and level adjustment to where your uh, foley comes in and out. So to do this, it's very simple. Add a couple of keyframes, pull down the levels and allow the other level to breathe. Also, when it comes to sound effects, using risers and whooshes are a great way to transition clips, especially with a whoosh moving from one environment to the next. That whoosh sound will drag the viewers or the audience across to the next clip but also a riser to create dramatic effect. Adding a high pitched riser tone to then drop off and then land on a specific visual like this night visual that I've used at the end of my clip, I think is quite effective in this style of video editing. So have a play with some of these sound effects, but I also recommend that if you can't find the sounds in the audio tab on CapCut to go to a audio library linked in the description below. Now the final step of the process is to export your clip. Now CapCut does a great job of making this step really simple. My my export settings are as follows. Now, if you've shot a lot of higher frame rate clips, 60, 120, 100 frames a second, I think they actually look better exported in 30 frames per second as opposed to 24. Most cinematic sequences are exported in 24 frames a second, as it's said that it appears to be most lifelike, as in our eyes are viewing the world in 24 frames a second. But do whatever you think looks best here. Like in my particular example, I export it in 30 frames a second and this video is in 30 frames a second because that's what I think works best for my edit. Obviously, if you've shot all of your clips in 24 frames a second, then there's no point exporting in 30 because it's gonna look janky. So just keep it in 24 frames a second. Everything will look good like 60, 120 in 24, but if you've shot in 24 and you're exporting in 60, or it's not gonna look good. So you can always go down, you can't go up. If you guys have enjoyed today's video and you wanna come on an epic adventure across Morocco with Anna and I and literally put all of these editing skills into practice, uh, then why not check out that link in the description where we are taking our Action Camera Masterclass on the road. So you can hang out with us, ask questions directly. We are gonna be doing workshops right throughout that trip as well as traveling with you guys and creating an amazing travel film from one of the most beautiful countries in the world. Um, so check that link out. If you guys have enjoyed today's video, punch a thumbs up button and I'll see you guys in the next upload. Thanks for sharing the stoke. Dale, peace.